Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Math Channel. I am now answering question number eight, which is the final question from this paper, the Pure Mathematics P4 paper from the June 2023 International A Level Edexcel exam. And this question here is about this curve C. Okay, and it's given, its equation is given parametrically. Okay, so there's a sketch of part of the curve C with parametric equations x equals t plus 1 over t y equals t minus 1 over t and t is greater than 0 0.7 now that most probably will be something significant for us to take note of um, it says here this the curve c intersects the x-axis at the point q find the x-coordinate of q okay so now we know when something crosses the x-axis y is equal to zero All right why why is that because on the x-axis we know y is equal to zero. So on the x-axis, y is equal to zero. So what we can say is we can take this equation and we can replace y with zero and we can find the value of t for which this is true. So we can multiply both sides of the equation by t to get rid of the fraction. So we have zero equals t squared minus one. So we can say one is equal to t squared Therefore, t is equal to plus or minus 1. The square root of uh, positive and negative square root of 1 plus or minus 1. However, we can say as t is greater than 0 0.7, we can say therefore t is equal to 1. So we know t is equal to 1. Now, that's not our answer because they said find the x coordinate of q. So we know that at the point q, okay, we, can, we know the y coordinate is 0, but we worked out that t is 1. So that same value of t we can use for the to find the x coordinate. So we can say the x coordinate of q is going to be when t is equal to one. So you're going to have one plus one over one, which is one plus one, which is two. So we can say the x coordinate of q is equal to two. Okay, so that's that point over there. That's two. So there's question um, eight, part a done. Now for part b. It says the line L is a normal to the curve at the point P as shown in figure 2. Okay, so this is the point, this line point, this point, this line L is a normal to the curve at, at the point P. Okay, they told us that given that T equals 2 at the point P, we got to find the coordinates of P. So we know at P, T equals 2. We know at P, at this point P here, t equals 2 and we got to find what the coordinates of p are all right so what we can do is we can take our equation of x and y and we can say when t equals 2 x is going to be 2 plus 1 over 2 which is going to be 4 over 2 plus 1 over 2 which is 5 over 2 so we can say the point p has x coordinate 5 over 2 and we know that when t equals 2 y is equal to 2 minus 1 over 2 which is 4 over 2 minus 1 over 2 which is 3 over 2 so those are the coordinates of p okay so the coordinates of p are 5 over 2 and 3 over 2 2 and a half and 1 and a half okay so that's the answer to part b of this question now we're going to go on to part c now part c says using calculus show that an equation of line L is 3x plus 5y equals 15. All right, so we have this information from the last part of the question. We know the coordinates of the point P. We know that T equals 2. Uh, we know that um, at that point P, we know at Q, we know at this point T was equal to 1, and the x coordinate of Q is 2. Okay, now we need to find... Um, the equation of line L. So they told us about line L in the last part of the question. The line L is the normal to the curve at the point P. Okay, so the normal to the curve. Now what is a normal first? The normal is a line which is perpendicular to the tangent. Okay, so the tangent at the point P would be such that it touches P, okay, and it doesn't cut through the curve. So it has the same gradient as the curve at p okay so the so we can say that um, the gradient of the tangent is equal to 
dy dx at p for the curve. And we know that the gradient of the tangent times the gradient of the normal equals negative 1. So if I work out what the gradient of this tangent is, I'll call this t. If we can work out the gradient of the tangent, then I can work out the gradient of the normal. Once I know the gradient of the normal, I have the gradient of this line and I have a point that it passes through. Because to find the equation of a straight line, we need two things. We need the gradient of the line and we need a point that it passes through. We already have the point, that's P, and the gradient is MN, the gradient of the normal which we can find. So if the first thing we need to do in order for us to be able to work out the equation of this uh, normal, the first thing we need to do is we need to find the gradient of this curve. Okay, so we need to find dy dx. Now what we should know is dy dx is the same as dy dt times dt dx when you're given things parametrically in terms of y in terms of you have x in terms of t and y in terms of t you've got you can uh, write the equation um you know um the, you can find the gradient by using the chain rule so we want to find dy dx that's the same as finding dy dt and multiplying it by dt dx so in either in both cases we need to find what dx dt is and what dy dt is first so x is t plus a half t, uh, plus 1 over t. So you can say that's t plus t to the power of minus 1. And y is equal to t minus t to the power of minus 1. So if I want to find the x dt, well, that's going to be 1 minus t to the power of minus 2. And if I want to find dy dt, that's going to be 1 plus, because minus 1 times minus t, that's plus t to the power of minus 2. So we can say dx dt, therefore, is going to be 1 minus 1 over t squared. And dy dt is going to be 1 plus 1 over t squared. Um, to make life a bit easier, I think it might be useful for us to write this as one fraction. That's not a big deal. That's going to be t squared over t squared. That's t squared minus 1 over t squared. And for dy dt, it's going to be the same thing, except there'll be a plus between them, t squared plus 1. All right, so I've just made them into equivalent fractions. That's t squared over t squared minus 1 over t squared. So you can write them under one denominator, t squared minus 1 over t squared. And similarly for this one. So we want to find what dy dx is. So dy dx is dy dt times dx dt. Okay, you can even say dy dt divided by d dx dt. It's the same thing. So we're going to take this dy dt, t squared plus 1 over t squared we're going to multiply it by the reciprocal of this dt d, uh, dx sorry dy dt times dt dx what am i doing times dt dx sorry about that okay so it's, of course it's dt dx as i wrote up there okay so it's times the reciprocal of this which is t squared over t squared minus one they cancel out and you're left with t squared plus one over t squared minus 1. So we can say that the at the at p when t is equal to 2 okay here we've got to use the t value for it because we have the gradient in terms of t so at p where t equals 2 then we can say dy dx is equal to 2 squared plus 1 over 2 squared minus 1 which is 5 over 3. So that's the gradient of the tangent therefore the gradient of the normal is what we're looking for is going to be the negative reciprocal of that so it's going to be the same numbers switched upside down with a change of sign so we know the point p has x and y coordinates 5 over 2 and 3 over 2 now we want to find the equation in terms of x and y so we're going to use those and we know the gradient of the normal is equal to minus 3 fifths so we can say y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 so we have y minus 3 over 2 equals m, which is minus 3 fifths times x minus 5 over 2. So now we can multiply both sides by 5 to get rid of the fraction. So we have 5y minus 15 over 2 equals minus 3 times x minus 5 over 2. We just multiplied by 5 to get rid of the um, 5 here. And now we're going to... Um, let's expand that bracket 5y minus 15 over 2 equals minus 3x 
plus that's going to be 15 over 2 okay and so we're gonna now add 3x to both sides so we have 3x plus 5y how do I, they want us to express it equals okay good so you got equals and you're going to have 15 over 2 plus 15 over 2 which is going to be basically 15 okay that's going to be 30 over 2 which is 15 okay so we have 3x plus 5y equals 15 so there we have our equation of the straight line okay 3x plus 5y equals 15 and that's the answer to this question okay and i think the last part of the question part d i will save in a separate video because it's more to do with volumes of revolution and integration so um, i'm going to save it under a separate video so other questions from this paper including part d of this question can be found in the playlist that will appear on the top right of this screen at the end of the video other questions dealing with this topic of parametric equations okay can be found in the playlist that will appear over here you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link and here you can watch a video if you click on this link it takes you to a video which shows you how to use my channel find the index um, pdf index lists which will help you to um, you know find things that you might need to use thank you for watching and see you soon